Hey guys, welcome to this special Facebook Live of Seller Sessions. Uh, so we're about to yes. face, basically from a service provider perspective, how was your Q4? But firstly, do you want to give the audience a little bit of background on yourself? Sure. So I started selling on Amazon in 2011 as a way to pay for college and then paid for law school by selling on Amazon. Yeah. So I've been in the seller community for, gosh, I guess almost a decade now. And then as, once I graduated law school, I decided to go full time and, as a lawyer to help Amazon sellers. So I pretty much uh, live in the IP and suspension area right now for Amazon sellers. Cool. So, so let, let's, let's kind of dig in on that. So basically, we know that this time of year, high velocity sales, if you're in the gifts area, it can be anywhere from four to eight X. There's a lot of money on the table. A lot of inventory has been purchased to match off Black Friday, Cyber Monday and everything else. There's a lot of black hat stuff that takes place on the platform. Stress levels are higher. Talk me through some of the things that your trends you're seeing at the moment you're helping out with your clients. So one of the big trends we're seeing right now on Amazon is that they're randomly selecting both private label and arbitrage sellers to provide documentation. So they're asking, you know, pretty abruptly with not much notice, you know, provide us with all this information or else you're going to be suspended either immediately or within 72 hours. And basically the risk factors on the account, you know, such as brands that are being sold and sales velocities and length of time as a seller determine what, what kind of notice you're being given, whether it's an immediate request or a 72 hour request. Yeah. So having all that documentation is kind of crucial right now and during Q4 just to have it ready in case you get asked. And, and, and this, is some of this driven by Black Hat is trying to manipulate the system so that you're being requested for this information or is this just Amazon cracking down? I think this is Amazon uh, looking at risk factors. So they're looking at certain risky brands, especially those that have a lot of counterfeit activity such as Nike, you mm -hmm. know, Under Armour, any of the stuff that can be gifted easily that's kind of cheap and easy to ship from China to the US. Anything that can be counterfeited easily, Amazon seems to be cracking down on right now and wanting proof of authenticity. Yeah. Cool. And what else, what other things you've seen on the black hat front where you, you have to kind of counter these tactics? Um, the rise of fake lawyer, law firms is uh, popping up right now on Amazon. So right. it's a black hat tactic that they'll create, you know, some of the black hat ta sellers will create fake law firms. Mm -hmm. and put in fake brand registry complaints through these law firms. And then it makes it some, pretty challenging to fight them, although not impossible. And we've been helping sellers with, you know, even a dead guy recently, he was, um, he somehow was able to file a brand registry complaint for a patent that he Jesus. created 10 years ago. So, yeah. you know, just the black hat stuff, it never stops, but especially during Q4, because anything they can do to disrupt their competitors, I guess, is... And what's the downtime on, on average stuff like this from the moment they get notification from Amazon to being able to resolve it? I know, I'm, you know, how long's a piece of string, but just a generalization, is this something that takes you out for weeks on end or something that can be dealt with swiftly if you knew or if you know where the problem comes in from? If, you, if we can quickly identify the problem, it's something that we can usually address within a week. Um, sometimes it's been some of them have been as short as 24 hours some of them have been as you know as long as a couple of weeks it really just depends on how fast we identify the issue and can get the information to amazon for them to see it yeah so it, you know really doing the due diligence right away and trying to figure out what's actually happening is crucial yeah um do you are you seeing uh like a rise of people using vendor accounts and stuff so they are um, you know, like these pesticide issues and some of the things that have come up in the past. Are you, de are you dealing and defending any of these at the moment? We have uh, seen that arise in that. One of the biggest ways we're telling sellers to help, um, you know, combat that is to make, just to download a flat file on their ASINs yeah. and go in and, um, and it's the uh, inventory, I want to say listing categorization report, but I can find the specific name for it. And if basically you go through and you want to make sure that every single box has something filled in on it, because yeah. as long as you as the seller have filled in all those boxes, then it delays the vendor contribution from taking immediate effect. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a, I think you have to, from memory, when I did it, you have to request this from Amazon. You raise a ticket through support. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a termina it's a, I can't remember the exact termination, but it's a listing report of some type which contains every element that appears in your listing. So you're able to look to see what's injected if, if additional words have been injected in there. And you can go through the list of pesticide things and search in that spreadsheet and see if it highlights, you know, if it comes up as well. And then Absolutely. obviously take those 
to remove those from the listing. And even doing it as a defensive strategy is what we're recommending now because you can do it before somebody injects stuff and you prevent them from being able to inject those keywords into the report because as the listing creator and owner, your contribution takes precedence over somebody else's. Right. Okay. So what you're doing is you're preempting this. As, um, so anyone who's listening now, just go and download the report. Yes. And then uh, you're by doing so, and then what changes you make in there to o- override the contribution to stop, say, a vendor central account from doing it? So what you do is you just make sure every single block has something useful filled into it. So oh, that way, and then you resubmit yes. it back to Amazon. Yes. Then they, when they have it, every block has something in it. So yeah. if, if the way Amazon works is if somebody submits a contribution to an empty block, they'll take it, even if they're mm-hmm. not the listing owner and not the listing creator. Yeah. But if the listing creator has already created that, has put information in there, mm-hmm. even if it's not necessarily the most useful information, it's now going to flag it for somebody else to review it first before Amazon accepts that contribution. Yeah. So email is the best way to reach me, yeah, either email or Facebook Messenger. Yep. So Facebook, um, it's, you know, it's just Jeff Schick on Facebook. Um, yep. So send me a message or email. It's Jeff at ecomattorneys.com. So that's J-E-F-F at E-C-O-M-A-T-T-O-R-N-E-Y-S.com.